23. I want to show this. This just happened this week. Check this out. This is kind of weird when you see this here and the reaction and the answer at the end. I think I showed this to you guys Yo, yesterday. This is, this is amazing. Watch this. Go ahead. The opportunities to respond to a former White House stenographer who this month outed you as a anonymous senior administration official who briefed reporters on Air Force Two en route to Ukraine in 2014. Um, he says that you spoke about giving aid to the Ukrainian national gas industry just days after the first or the second son had uh, secretly joined the board of a uh, Ukrainian gas company. He says he considers you part of a corrupt influence peddling, cons peddling conspiracy. He wants to testify to a Delaware grand jury about it. Uh, do you have a response to that? And were you part of a corrupt influence peddling operation? Involving the Biden family in Ukraine or any other country? No. No. <laughs> By the way, Next look at his question. blink rate. Look at the blink rate. No. Any <laughs> FBI profilers will tell you when the blink rate starts going up is where you're, you're, you have mental stress. And, and seeing that, the point that we said yesterday, Pat, that journalism is dead, he says no. Nobody goes into a frenzy and goes, well, wait a minute. Wait, what do you? Mm -hmm. Nobody says nothing and they move on to the next story. I'll tell you what. Well, the fact that I had said this on one of the on press conferences that I saw. These journalists, although he laid out the facts beautifully, absolutely dope the way he laid out the facts. Where he effed up is by asking a closed-ended question. When you ask them, didn't you have anything to do with this? And what, okay, no. Next. I'm not about to answer. You didn't give me an open-ended question. Make me, make me speak after that. What do you have to say about that? That would have been a good open-ended question to add. What do you have to say about that? How would you address that um, to, to the American people? That would then bring out more facial expressions to show he's lying. Probably some stuttering, probably some dead out lies, like an actual statement that he's making other than no. But the music they played in that video was uh, very You would just know he's guilty just he's by the music. <laughs> dun, dun, oh, those X-Files. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's my thoughts on the Trump situation. Was that me? Is that you? No, that was, uh, oh, that was Tom. Tom. Um, you know, a lot of people use the word witch hunt, right? And um, I have the definition of that. I'm not saying that is a full-on witch hunt, but it definitely smells witch hunty. Yeah. Right? I don't know if that's a, witchy, a verb, witchy. but definitely smells witch hunty. The def now, he's about to read the definition of witch hunt. That is what this is, right? <laughs> they trying to shut this dude up based off of rumors, things that's not true. But they're saying that we need him to be shut up so that we can continue to do what we want to do. So put this out there in the atmosphere. Put this over there in the atmosphere and put that over there about Trump. That should be enough to burn him at the stake. But go ahead. Definition of a witch hunt is a campaign directed against a person or a group holding unorthodox or unpopular views. We can have a debate of whether his views are unpopular. They're certainly unorthodox, uh, but that's what's going on there. And, you know, it came from when witches who were not doing anything witchcrafty were burned at the stake yep. uh, for allegedly doing things. So You hear that, right? For rumors, the witches were burned at the stake. They, they were deemed guilty and sentenced to death publicly publicly based off of rumors now this has been happening now let me tell you something like this and i'm a black man and i would never start bringing up slavery and jim crow and all that other stuff which is a very negative and dark time for for everyone not just black people very dark and negative time for us all all right um but this thing this same way of running things it was happening way back then it was happening way back then. So the same thing for witches, the same thing for anything you can think of. If somebody with power do not like someone else and they don't have any facts to really to nail them on anything, then they're going to make up something. Police still do it today. Detectives still do it today. CIA do it. FBI does it. That's, that's the system we're in. You're talking about a systemic oppression? Yeah, it's out there. And the powers that be, they do it whenever they feel like it. And it's not a black and white thing. That's the thing I want to get across to people. It's a, if, if you don't have the power and you don't have the cash, listen, let me tell you something. Even if you got the cash, if you ain't got the power and we got the people on our side that can arrest you, run up in your house and, and, and plant things or just, just say whatever we want to do. We got judges in place. We got lawyers in place. We're clearly paying them off. You just now seen the, the video of Joe Biden when he was the VP. 
where he was the you saw how smug he was he wasn't he was unapologetic as hell he cared less about getting in trouble but he said we told you we're not giving you that billion unless you fire him and guess what he ended up firing this dude is acting like he's at a damn barber shop telling a mob um a mob story of pressing somebody out like, well, we robbed this one guy this way. He's sitting out there telling him like he's, he's the big boss or something. Yeah, I do this. This is what I do. Don't mess with me. I'm VP. I told them, go ahead, call my boss right now. Call the president right now and watch it still go forward. And you see what happened. They ended up firing him and hiring somebody that'll work with us more properly, take, um, take our orders without saying no. Dude, they do whatever the hell they want to do, man. It's very difficult for me to sign in to, oh, I'm a Democrat, or oh, I'm a Republican, I'm a conservative. I'm still not all gung-ho about either side. Be honest with you, it's the when they are wrapped with their with their with their um um all the different agencies that support whatever narrative that they want to push forward, they become different people. They have a decision then to make. To, add, to either move with integrity and character or to, to be dirty and prolong their life in, in politics. Uh, most of them decide to do the latter. Trump decided to do the right thing. And he got screwed. And we were taught that he's racist, he's ignorant, he's always starting stuff with other countries. Um, if, if he was in office, there would be a war. But when he was in office, this dude was going to places that our presidents didn't even go, shaking hands with people in North Korea. Come on, bro. This dude was starting rela actual relationships. And they respected him. They feared him. What am I saying that's wrong, man? definitely feels like that we had the conversation with the two fbi agent whistleblowers the other day and the term weaponized and politicized was being thrown around like a football left and right well for uh, biden i don't think it's the witch hunt i think it's really the question of which bribe yeah ex there you exactly go. Um, so exactly. <laughs> look at his face after telling that joke <laughs> it's not with well, biden it's not the witch hunt it's witch bribe <laughs> am i right <laughs> i'm so proud of that joke <laughs> I was waiting to drop that one. I, I wrote that one down. It's right here. See, look, I wrote it down. I even circled it. Put a star beside it. <laughs> yeah, I'm proud of it. I might even say it later. Look at his face. He is so damn proud of that joke. It wasn't that great of a joke, but listen, I'm glad you got it. I'm glad you was able to fire that shot, bro. I'm glad you fired that shot, and I'm glad. Look at his face, man. He's so proud. <laughs> I'm sorry for making fun of you, bro. I think <laughs> I actually, I actually think that was pretty good. I just, uh, I just think that your 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 level of pride for throwing that one out there, just I don't know, man. It's just something. I, I, well, I mean, we learned we learned with Trump uh, in Trump's defense that Russia, the Russia Gate, turned out to be not a Ukraine stuff. Didn't really turn out to be anything. Hillary. The impeachment stuff didn't really turn out to be anything. The Stormy Daniels hush money. We'll see what happens with that. Seems very petty. But I think this is just going to be a slow drip. You mentioned Eric Adams. I think you meant Alvin Bragg, the, the state of New York that is coming after him. Obviously this. And then we're going to see what happens with the Georgia situation. That's him on tape asking to find uh, 11,000 something something votes. Uh, I think this comes into three camps. Uh, kind of like what we talked about with Tate. There's the people who are automatically assuming that Tate is guilty without any evidence, and they've basically anchored to that position. There's nothing you could tell them to prove them otherwise. There's the other camp that's like, he's the man, he's the top G, you can't show me anything that he's done, and uh, I have his back. Totally understand that. And then there's the independent free thinkers that are basically like, let's see what happens here. And I think that's exactly what's playing out with the Trump situation. Number one, you have the MAGA base that is pissed mm -hmm. okay there's nobody on the on the on the right side of things that is happy about this they completely are on the camp that this is a freaking witch hunt i don't know if you saw what mark levin had to say what? dude went off but here's the thing with magas 
All right. Here's the thing with MAGAs, and don't take this the wrong way. Your issue is, and I'm talking to the, I'm talking to MAGA country right now. If you're a MAGA, a MAGA <laughs> I'm speaking to you. All right. Hopefully, you hear what I'm about to say. The reason why you aren't as effective when it comes to pushing the y'all are afraid to break the law. Everything is by the book with you all. And since you're afraid to get dirty, the side that plays dirty wins because this country was built, whether you want to um, admit to it or not, off of playing dirty. Yeah, we put some rules into place in the process to make sure we can control certain things and make matters better. But the people who play dirty, they win. We all support. Do you ever watch your, 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 I don't know if you watch sports or anything, but you, have you ever witnessed your husband, boyfriend, brothers, um, uncles, father, grandfather watching sports? Most times when we're watching sports and we're rooting for a team, we see all of the dirty stuff that our team are doing. But we hope they don't get caught. But every little thing that the other team does, we want them to get caught. Ref, you didn't see that? You're blind. You didn't see that? He's holding them the whole time. But when our side does it, we do it when we take our kids, when our kids start playing sports and all of that. And we're out there in the moms. Y'all know y'all do it. Stop playing. You know you do it. You'll just turn around to your friends and be like, oh, he was fouling them the whole time, but I'm glad my baby didn't get caught. Go, baby. Y'all don't play dirty enough. That's why it's so easy for them to say, do you know how, do, do you not see how evil they are? Look at Jan 6. Look at that. That's the biggest thing that ever happened to this country since 9-11. It's easy for them to look at you all's legal protests <laughs> That was corrupted by the FBI and everybody else that they placed in the inside of there to make sure it got a little muddy, a little dirty, so it could look more democratish. All right? That's what it did. And those are the parts that they're talking about the most. But they will not even consider all of the protests that happened before and after that, where cars were being burnt up, flipped over, people's businesses being busted into, people dying on the streets, people being beat up for no reason because those people voted for them. So we're going to leave them alone. Shh. Be quiet. We're not talking about them. Y'all don't know how to get dirty, man. And nothing's going to happen. MAGA's, MAGA fans are, MAGA um, supporters are pissed. What's going to happen? Not a damn thing because you all follow the rules and follow the laws. And I actually, I commend you all for that. I, I stand with y'all 1,000% on that. That's not a bad thing to say that y'all don't break the rules, man. That's a great thing. That's a phenomenal thing. People who actually give a crap about the rules and the laws. People who care about God's rules and God's laws. That means something, that means more to me. That if I have to take the L, as long as I've done it the right way, I'll take the L.